This is the Crit RPG Podcast, your one-stop shop for everything Lit RPG, Progression Fantasy, and Royal Road. Alright, hi and welcome to the Crit RPG Podcast, to the pilot episode of this wonderful new adventure we're going on. Today with me is Haylock, writer of Heretical Fishing and other fun stories. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. Uh, you're hailing from the sweet shores of Australia. Absolutely, uh, based on the Gold Coast of Southeast Queensland, a beautiful, beautiful place. Ooh, that's nice. I mean, like we talked about, um, we talked about it before the show started. You mentioned you are writing while you're walking on the beach. Um, that sounds lovely, yeah. and I'm jealous definitely attempting to write while walking along the beach <laughs> the uh the audio doesn't pick up too well with all the wind um but I, i've definitely tried it i've definitely written a few a few paragraphs at least or mapped out scenes while walking along the coast mm-hmm. all right it's like dictation very fitting so with dictation right yeah yeah with dictation yeah yeah, yeah we spoke about this before and uh I outlined my own struggles with dictation software, um, <laughs> either paying like a thousand bucks for Dragon. Um, by the way, Dragon, you can sponsor us. Um, I would really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, uh, me too, please. Thank you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Please, please sponsor us, Dragon. Uh, like, we're, we're, not even, we're not even like two minutes in. We're already shelling out. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, already shilling. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, speaking of shells, um, novels about... Things that live on beaches are very hot on Royal Road right now, and I think you kickstarted a trend. Do you want to introduce a novel, Heretical Fishing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the novel Heretical Fishing uh, that I've been writing for about 40 days now, um, but has been stubbornly kicking around my head for about a year, mm-hmm. not wanting to get out of there. Yeah, um, started writing it. Essentially, it's a, a slice of life um, action combination thing, um, basically about a man that has all these, he arrives in a new world, has all these pressures to, um, become a strong person, but he just wants to go fishing and that's what he does. (laughs) All right. I mean, the subtitle is, if I correct, if I recall it correctly, it's a guide to fishing and knowing the cults and outsmarting the way, outsmarting the fish, annoying the cults. And what, what was the last one? And alienating oneself. Oh, alienating <laughs> oneself. Yeah, I wonder yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, the world he finds himself in, uh, obviously, there's cults that he annoys. There's fish. He outsmarts. Um, and fishing is essentially frowned upon where he arrives. Oh, yeah. Um, but he sticks with it, alienates himself a little bit, but, you know, eventually finds some friends along the way. Oh, okay, so alienating himself from society. Okay, I get it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I, 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 for the love, I, I'm, I'm not a native speaker. Um, I know I fake an American accent, like, relatively well, like, but uh, I was not oh, getting no. that. <laughs> oh, right. No, your English is amazing. That's the first time I think I might have stumped you with a word or oh, a, yeah. a phrase. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, th- I think, uh, I think um, a friend of ours, host, does that a lot more. Um, but, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, like we're on a we're both on on a Discord server, which is why you were my, were my first victim. You were you're easily, yeah, I think, yeah. right now the most famous of us all. Um, really, just a beacon of hope for all us middling authors. <laughs> um, who have for never... now, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I would actually like love to kind of um, partake of your wisdom in a few minutes. But before we get into that, I kind of want to know, I mean, you've mentioned this already a little bit. It's, it's, been, it's been rummaging around in your head, but why heretical fishing? Like, what was the thing that really made you go, I want to write a novel about a guy who's basically Elon Musk, but gets hit by his own Tesla truck? <laughs> yeah, it's um, anything creative. I'm a bit of a woo-woo guy, so I kind of have the feeling that things just come to us. Um, I'm sure anyone that writes sort of just has these these throwaway thoughts that come. Um, some of them repeatedly come and won't go away. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was one of those. Uh, so it started out as, you know, um, I was listening to uh, Beware of Chicken at the time, which is a very popular uh, slice of life sort of comedy on Royal Road and Amazon. Um, I was listening to that at the time. 
And I was halfway through writing another book and somehow I just thought like, man, this would be awesome if he was fishing. Because mm-hmm. I like obviously I like fishing. I've written a book about a man that just goes to a new world and decides to go fishing. You do live on the beach. Um, I do live on the beach so of Australia, so I'm I'm in a, a prime location for fishing and, you know, mm-hmm. uh, water based activities. Cool. Um so it was a recurring thought. Um I did go a bit business minded on it. I then took it and like analyzed if I thought it would be a good story. Um uh-huh. and basically I I I didn't see any reason why it wouldn't do well. I didn't think it would do as well as it has done. I thought it would find like, you know, a niche target with people that have Mm -hmm. gone fishing, you know, like um, it's one of those things that I find very relaxing to do. And, you know, there's a certain feeling like there's adrenaline spike uh, when you like when you hook a fish or when you feel a bite. There's, mm. It's a very exciting thing. Like it's exciting enough for people to go out and spend all day catching nothing, just in the hopes of you know getting that dopamine hit oh, yeah. of actually you know catching a fish. Um, so I thought that in you know in literature would be you could make that exciting, you could make that uh, enjoyable. And I couldn't find anything. I was like, my first thing was like, oh well, I'll, I'll see if I, I'll see if I can find this story. And there was nothing. Like searching fishing on Royal Road or even on Amazon, didn't really find anything fantasy related. Um, so I felt the need to get the words out there. And like I said, I, I tried to banish the story from my head because I was writing something else. And I was like, you know, focus, need to focus. But it just kept coming. It right. wouldn't go away. <laughs> I mean, I, I can, I, I totally see it, right? I mean, the entire thing, I mean, you you mentioned um, We Were Off Chicken before, which is a, like a Yangsha, Wuxia, Wuxia, I think, novel. Um, I yeah, don't you, know the difference. Uh, please don't stone me, right? <laughs> yeah. Please don't stone me for that. Um, but... Um, I think like now that you mention it is all something almost like um transcendental to fishing, right? Um I mean I've never fished. Um I'm with a kind of like a wussy guy who can't kill anything. But I I, yeah. I can see that kind of like balance between like a meditative state and then this rush of like I'm about to kill something. Like I really <laughs> I really, <laughs> I really can see that, yeah. Yeah, I definitely um yeah, I'm sort of the same, which is funny because I, I like fishing. So obviously, you know, I do uh, humanely kill some fish in order to eat them, uh, which is something I've reflected in the novel too. Like, you know, anything that is killed is done instantly, humanely. There's no um, the main character Fisher with a C, <laughs> F I S C H E R. Um, the German he doesn't yes. use. Yeah, yeah, German name. Uh, it was. Um, yeah, it's actually German for like it's the German surname for fishers, fishermen. Um, but was also from um, one of, another thought that wouldn't leave my mind of a lecturer uh, when I was in university that told me about the uh, the Nobel Prize winner Fisher who discovered caffeine, whom I very much appreciate because coffee is my life. Yeah, you would have you would have thought that this guy would have been named barrister or barista, but. Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah well yeah he discovered the molecule for it anyway so um, <laughs> oh, actually, not, he actually cool. yeah 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 awesome. yeah so i mean that tied in i was like okay you know that has to be his name um but yeah he doesn't um he doesn't like uh kill anything he doesn't i mean obviously he, he kills things for food but he does everything humanely he doesn't use live bait which is also something i don't do because i don't i don't agree with it um totally you know totally fine for people that do want to do that but uh, that doesn't bring me joy. That makes me sad. Mm. Yeah, okay. I get it. Um, mm. I mean, you mentioned something that actually made me think a little bit. Um, and that mm. was related to a quote from Stephen King. Um, I think he said that writer's notebooks are the graveyard of bad ideas. Um, or treasure trove <laughs> yeah. of, bad, of, of bad ideas or something like that. Um, and that, yeah. like, if you have a thought for a novel or a thought, or an idea for a novel, it will, and it sticks with you, and it doesn't go away, it's a good one. Um, and I think this, it, it's, I mean, it's, I mean, it's definitely kind of true, isn't it? Um, the way you mentioned that. But I would like to actually segue from that to asking you, what's the best kind of, like, writing advice you've ever gotten? Yeah, um, so I'm a big proponent of... Um, we're lucky as authors in today's age. There's so much advice and good advice. Like you have, um, you have Brandon Sanderson's lectures online for free. 
his university lectures. You have like 20 books to 50K. You have their YouTube channel from their live events, which is just a treasure trove of advice. Obviously, not everything will apply to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the advice that I, the best advice I got personally uh, was just start. Like as simple as that sounds, like just start writing. I think yeah. people get very neurotic about it. Um, I definitely did this to an extent. I spent like a year plus just like uh, listening and spending so much time um, l like listening to writing advice without actually writing anything. And the true improvement came when I just started writing. And like the first, the first words, you know, they weren't great. When I came back and to edit my first, you know, um, I wrote like 200,000 words before I even edited the first um, chapters. And like the, the marked improvement from that was insane. Like you, just writing is so important to improving. I'm going to write any day now. I'm going to write. <laughs> yeah. I have this idea. I'm just going to start. Yeah. Like it's, it's scary and it's hard writing those first words. Like I can, I still remember the day because it like it, it gets lodged in your mind. Like of me just going to a yeah. cafe and like punching out like 4,000 words. And oh I, can, I can picture everything I did that day. Those are numbers like that the words. I can only dream of. Oh yeah, no, that's the thing too. Cause, cause I'd listened to so much writing advice and like all of it, everything in the indie space is like, you know, words, 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 you need to get your words. That's what matters. Just getting words every day. So I was like, okay, I need to get 4,000 words. I just like just this stream of consciousness written out and like the dialogue was stunted and the sentences were really janky. Um, but you know, in, in getting those out, that's, that gives you the chance to improve and coming back to them later, it was easy to improve on them. My issue isn't, isn't the writing. I can write all day. I can, I can like, until I hurt my wrist, that is. I can write all yeah, day. Yeah. Um, but the editing is a problem, right? So, like, the, mm -hmm. moment, the moment I edit, there's this, this French guy in my head going, like, what is this? Who has written this nonsense? Oh. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. And that ties into other good advice I got as well, which is uh, knowing when to let it go. Yeah, absolutely. That one, and I think that's a... I think, you know, your problem is also my problem and the problem of a lot of writers because yeah. you want to, you can polish something repeatedly and over and over and over, but at some point you're not really improving it. And I had to hear that from like 10 different people before that stuck with me. And I went, okay, like it's time to try, it's time to just write something else. And that's when I wrote Heretical Fishing, which has been the one that has like really oh. taken off. So thank God that advice finally lodged in my brain and I, you know, moved yeah. past a previous project. I, I had a I had a friend in, in real life who um who had, who was on the very much on the same track, right? She um mm -hmm. she wrote this like intensely well crafted novel about like this this kind of like fa fascist Europe where uh, two refugees are trying to get like I think from like Spain to France or something. Um, and it was like, it was heartbreaking. It was just great, but it also was completely soulless. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And then, then she wrote like this, like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to write something like this, like easy and fun. I'm just going to type it down. It was like, send it out. And it was, it was in traditional, traditional publishing. It was like 2011 or something, right? When Royal mm -hmm. Road wasn't really a thing yet. And she just sent it out. Um, and it immediately, the first publisher was like, this is great. We want this. And she hated it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> but it was actually, actually quite good. Um, she, she's German. She wrote it in English and it gets published in German. So someone went to the length of translating it all back and it wasn't They <laughs> translated it back. Yeah, that's hilarious. Uh, but um, like the, the lesson from that, I think, is um, definitely like shutting out that like inner critic is super important when you're writing. Um, but it's also super important when you let it out to kind of not have that part of your personality kind of um, stop you from writing, right? Because... I mean, I've certainly yeah. been in a headspace where I was thinking, oh, anything I write is just going to be so bad. I'm going to be mad at myself later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you like the, the dread of coming back to read it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's so tough. One point of advice that helped me there was to um, accept that if you know how to do it better, you know how to do it better. Right. It's a learning process. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's you just yeah you have to you have to go through. I think everyone has to go through that, yeah. um, especially to improve. Like it, you improve over time. Um, another thing that people like it's always said that it's a marathon, not a sprint, which is so true. Like mm. even if you write if you write an entire book and you know even you're not happy with it and it's terrible, 
the next book you write is going to be better and the one after that is going to be better. Like yeah. if you can manage to get past that block of stressing and worrying about it being good, like just think of it as a skill you're improving. Oh yeah, for sure. Incrementally. Yeah. I mean like if we're if we're if you're uh, like quoting Saint Sanderson again. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's written like what like 10 novels, 11 novels before he got published. Like he was like 31 or something. He started writing when he was 16. Yeah. So definitely um definitely definitely. I mean the 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 author who wrote Harry Potter um I don't know who she is. I I forgot her name. Um Anyway, Someone asked me this today, J.K. Rowling. <laughs> Someone else asked me this today. She, um, yeah. she was like, what, like 46 or something? Yeah. Yeah, I think like the hyper example is like George R. R. Martin as well. He was a starving artist for like 20 to 30 years, like really struggling and then bang. But that, that's like, like dedication, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, single-mindedness. I think, you, yeah, you, you'll find out if you enjoy doing it too, like... Once I started writing, I was, I sort of just, I was like, oh, well, this is what I do now. You know what I mean? There was no like, oh, maybe I'll write a book and see how it goes. I was like, oh, uh, this is what I like. Like, I sort of, mm-hmm. everything else sort of fell by the wayside. That's really nice. You're doing this full time now then? Oh, no, I still have a, <laughs> I very much still have a day job. Um, but we're working on it. To me, to me, it was like, it's a, it's a matter of time. You know what I mean? It's not like an if one of my stories will, allow me to, or a combination of my stories will allow me to go full-time it's just a matter of when oh yeah totally i mean yeah if you're looking at the, at the business side of things right if you if you put like heretical fishing maybe some advanced chapters or like an advanced edit or something on uh mm-hmm. ku and then maybe maybe like write something new on um like on the on the side after you finish the uh the, the first novel that you had what was it called by the way what was what called sorry the the first novel that you wrote Oh, uh, it's called The Aggressive Ascension. All right, and that's also available in Royal Road, yeah? Yep, it's currently uh, on a bit of a break yeah. because there is some changes I want to make before I continue publishing it. And I'm sort of fixated on uh, heretical fishing. You want to add more crabs? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's just not enough crabs. Like, how can it be a good story without crustaceans? So, yes, yeah, it is absolutely. what it is. So, after, yeah, after you know, all the readers begged and moaned for more crabs, I decided they were right and I had to go back and adjust that. Pinnacle of evolution, got to have crabs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, carcinization is coming for us all. <laughs> oh, god, yeah, we'll, we'll all get gooped by the giant claw. Um, <laughs> yeah, in case on, any of our listeners don't know what's going on, don't worry, we don't either. Um, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta ask host about that. Um, anyway, um, you mentioned actually you had yet some friends who, um, told you or like enemies, I guess, but they said that your edits didn't really like move the needle on aggressive ascension, like real life friends or online. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, another good tip, I guess, is just asking people for help as weird as that sounds like, um, there's so many author groups you know, I mean, we're in like a random discord now that formed on Reddit and like it's been, I think, largely helpful for everyone involved. You know what yeah. I mean? Like uh, really good constructive criticism. I got really good. I got a lot of help with editing, um, just posting on the Lit RPG Authors Guild. Mm-hmm. Um, I got, uh, I just posted a thing. I was like, hey, you know, can anyone give me a help? Like I've edited, I've edited this thing like 10 times, like the first two chapters and I'm blind to it right now, which is, you know, that happens. It's so hard to, you can't really, it, it's hard sometimes to edit your own work and look at it objectively. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I got a lot of help uh, from friendly authors reaching out. Uh, the, the main one came from Seth, who, uh, the, the author of Big Sneaky Barbarian. Oh, that guy, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I have to actually check what he publishes under because it's a different name that I only know from his regular name. No, oh yeah, sorry. He, so he publishes under Seth McDuffie. Uh, for Big Sneaky Barbarian, he's also a lovely dude. He has a uh, he's a DM on a um, a Dungeons and Dragons podcast, so he has a good mic. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, not not like also us, right? With people, like no soundproofing and like not even having an audio monitor, so I have to edit everything in the, in the end. Yeah, me in my lounge room with like a Void Corsair headset, <laughs> sound and scuffed as anything. It sounds great over Discord. I mean, what can I say, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Look, we're working with what we got. Okay, now this is becoming a podcasting podcast, so uh, let's not do that. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so next up is 
continuing our writer's advice block, basically. Um, yeah. So we already asked you what best advice you got, but now I want to ask you how to apply it, basically. So what's one thing you've really learned about the craft of writing over the course of writing heretical fishing? Is there anything you would go back now if you had the time and like completely redo or something like that? Yeah, um, there was... I'm not sure I have anything for heretical fishing or things I would adjust, um, which, you know, it may be because it hasn't been that long. Mm -hmm. um, it may be because I reached a point where I'm mostly happy and content with the choices I made um, mm -hmm. after spending like a neurotic amount of time writing and editing the first book. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably better to reference the first book. I definitely have things I would change. Right. Um, in retrospect, the um, the main character, because I, f I structured it as a party um, working together, I was like, okay, I want a story where it's a, you know, it focuses on a group of people rather than a single person. As a result, I think my MC kind of falls flat sometimes. All right. Um, and that's definitely something that's a really important thing. Um, because even though it's structured as a party, um, readers need to, you know, feel a connection with the person who it's, it's written in third person, but it's still from his perspective, yeah. from his point of view. Um, so that absolutely is a, uh, something I definitely learned, um, just from publishing because I wrote the first one for so long. Um, I relied on help from, uh, Seth McDuffie in particular for the uh -huh. early author, um, early chapters, but I never put any of the chapters out. I never went through a, um, I could have gone for a, um, beta reader, a paid beta reader through like Fiverr or something. Ooh. They probably would have picked this up a good one. Um, or I could have just published it on Royal Road earlier and actually gotten that advice because I could have just fixed that up right from the start. Instead, I got like 200,000 words deep and I've got this main character who kind of falls flat and he's being carried by the auxiliary characters who I love and readers seem to love. Um, but yeah, the main character seems to have fallen flat for people, which is an issue that is one of the big issues that I need. I want to fix before I continue publishing the words I have on it. Definitely fear there. I, um, I wrote this urban fantasy. From this point of view, from this, uh, doesn't really matter. Um, but I was like, I think, 120,000 words in when I realized the point of view doesn't work. It, it's just not exciting <laughs> at all. Yeah, I hate that. Yeah, <laughs> so, that so I yeah. suddenly I had to like redo the entire thing. Basically, I, I threw it away and wrote a new novel um, based, <laughs> yeah. based on an auxiliary character. And um, yeah, if, we, if we're looking at Torchbearer, um, the novel I'm writing currently... Uh, it's, yep. it's basically the same thing, right? <clears throat> it started out as this novel about a young boy who finds a tank imbued with the AI of his dead mother. Um, but uh, the, the guy isn't even in the novel anymore. Um, the main character isn't even a mother. <laughs> it's it's yep. completely changed. So, yeah, um, yeah. It definitely. just evolves. Definitely. Yeah, I've, I've, that's a recurring problem for me. I mean, I've only... Um, I'd say I've stuck with two fictions. I've started a lot of fictions, but sort of dropped them over the years yeah. before I really started um, just under two years ago. But uh, originally, uh, The Aggressive Ascension was written in first person. Mm -hmm. And I wrote like 40,000 words and was like, I'm an idiot. This is a story of a party and a team. Like first person doesn't work. What am all I right. doing? So yeah, I had to go through and rewrite all that. And that um, is a painful experience. No, nowhere near 120 Mm -hmm. um, but I also did the same thing with heretical fishing. When I started writing that, I was so used to the uh, the third person. I just I was like, oh yeah, I'll just do third person. I got maybe fifteen thousand words in and went, what am I doing? This is this needs to be first person. Like and that, thankfully, um, that wasn't too hard to change. It's sort of like a lot of going through and searching, like he himself. <laughs> his and just like replacing oh yeah. um there was a fair there was some paragraphs that like had to be rewritten entirely um but thankfully some still made it through like if you look through the the comments on like some of the earlier chapters like one through four there's someone that's like hey uh he said like his or he here and it's like oh god how did that make it through like i did 10 edits <laughs> how did that get through yeah but that that's something i think is natural as well like writing a fair bit and then going like oh this is this is wrong i need to change this for the story oh yeah totally remember the time incident <laughs> yeah uh, okay yeah. yeah now it's time for naming a book on royal road that you love so it's basically about paying it forward sharing the love mm -hmm. i have to give the shout out to merchant crab by host oh yeah um 
just to tell the story we referenced earlier, um, so hosts, we all joined this Discord um, to for you know improving writing. Yeah. Uh, host and I had both unpublished stories we hadn't shared with anyone else or each other, and they were both like they both were so similar um, <laughs> in that you know his his main character is a crab, my uh, main sidekick is a crab, but in reading it like we had we had some of the auxiliary characters were named the same mm-hmm. like the language we used when uh like we the language we used for the crabs expressions was like so similar it felt like i had written it when reading it we all like that um his main character balthazar wants to be wants to like get baked goods yes. my story like it hinges on baked goods in the beginning as a form of currency like it was just kind of insane like how it converged now yeah. i see it yeah yeah, Merchant Crab, fantastic story. Would recommend. It's a story about a NPC crab who just befalls shenanigans. It's it's wonderfully written. It's kind of like slice of lifey. It's very uh, it's very charming. In, as soon as I read those uh, the chapters he posted on the Discord before publishing the Royal Road, I knew I wanted to read more. So I'd highly recommend you check out Merchant Crab on Royal Road. Now I'm I'm bringing up the um the 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 cover blurb here. And I'm trying to, I'm gonna try and read it out, even though my voice is breaking. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I was not prepared. I need to make tea for the next podcast. Um, so again, prime production value right here. <laughs> um, <laughs> We're doing time. our best. So, Balthazar was just a random giant crab NPC enjoying his life in a fantasy world full of bothersome adventurers. But then he had to go and accidentally discover the secret of attributes and levels, also pi. With baked goods and coin as his new life goals, he turns to the competitive business of trading the random junk adventurers loot every day. Follow Balthasar as he does everything to find a baker. Except leave his pond, because exploring the dangerous world out there is for suckers. Witness how adventurers just can't seem to stop dying around his home, and cheer for a crab who makes great new friends by simply buying them. I think I this this blurb <laughs> says it all. I think so. Go and give it a read. Absolutely. Merchant Crab yeah. by Host um, on Royal Road. It's on Rising Stars right now, actually. It yep. is. Yeah, it's climbing. I I think he's just cracked a thousand followers. He has a thousand and one. He's cracked it today. I've been watching it because it was getting. He was approaching a thousand, so I've been watching it this afternoon. <laughs> so one thousand one followers. It's just like in that Arabian Night story. Um, <laughs> 169 favorites. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Noise. <laughs> yeah. 56, nice. 56,922 total views. So give it a go, you guys. I don't think you can go wrong. I've read it myself. And if, you're not, if you aren't hooked by chapter three, I don't know what will hook you. All right. <laughs> yeah. It starts out strong. It's very well done. It starts heroically strong. All right. So, you want to give any shout outs? I mean, you've already mentioned like lots of people who helped you before, but if you want to give some more shout outs, let's go. Yeah, absolutely. I'll just shout out some of the stories from the Crit RPG Discord where we've all been hanging out and helping each other. Obviously, there's your story, Torchbearer. Oh. We've got to check that out. Very exciting. Uh, we've got uh, Bubba Vader with the. Is it Owl Another World? Oh, yeah, Owl Another World. Yeah, that's also really cool. <laughs> yeah so good we've got k novels we've got rasha sud yeah rasha rasha is, is really cool um rasha's writing um final boss final best, boss, friends. best friends exactly if you're into horror and um if you like a little bit of a dungeon crawler carl vibe and can't get enough of that definitely give that a go sorry to call back sorry to call back to something um mentioning dungeon crawler carl just reminded me i meant to say for writer's advice something that stuck with me from uh matt dinneman huh? about um over editing oh yeah so he was he was speaking about um the overuse of programs like pro writing pro writing aid and grammarly which can be very useful um if you're using those to like identify uh grammar issues or echo the echo function on there to see like words that are repeated Mm -hmm. um too often and sort of like you can find that jarring um also the uh passive passive writing identifies that well but also if you go through and if you're going to accept 
every prompt or every suggestion from something like that, um, it sort of sands your story down and makes it very bland. Yeah. Um, so that's something I would keep in mind, you know, back to writing advice from like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> but I think is uh, something that really stuck with me and I agreed with wholeheartedly. I mean, we wouldn't be Quit RPG Podcast if we didn't go off on random tangents at the end of the show. So, Oh, absolutely. I, and crap. There's, there's, there's so much more that we could talk about, like <laughs> AI writing. We could talk about... Um, there's so many people on our Discord. I mean, we're only 10. But... Um, there are some bangers out there that you haven't even heard of um, that are coming up soon. Absolutely. I think that's what I'm most excited for, personally. Oh, the Zeusy fights there's thing? Some, there's some things... Yeah, there's some things in the work. Oh, God. In the works that are... Uh, yeah, Saving Throw too. Oh, my... Yeah, I met, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for that to be published. That I'm is... I'm keen that to is... see how they go. Yeah, absolutely. So, I guess this is it. This is our first podcast episode done. It's it. We did it. We, we did made it, it through. Um, Thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here. I mean, you were worried about not being the best of guests, but I couldn't have imagined anyone better. I, I'll be really honest. This conversation was a blast. <laughs> oh, thank you. I had fun too. All right. Um, well, thank you so much for listening to the Crit RPG podcast. Please pardon our non-existent production value. And I hope that this conversation with Haylock was fun to you. If you liked it, please rate up this Reddit post or, I don't know, click like and subscribe, I guess. I have no idea how to money influencer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Follow, like, subscribe, all of the things. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and um, please do give Haylock's story, Heretical Fishing, a read if you haven't already. Or check out Merchant Crab by Host. Both of those are hilarious slice of life stories that will make your day just a little bit sweeter. And if you're really into pain and suffering and emotional anguish, try reading Torchbearer. That's the book that I'm writing. Absolutely. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. And goodbye. Bye. This episode has been brought to you by the Council of the Eternal Hiatus. If you're looking for a Discord server to discuss, read, or write lit RPG, this is the place for you. The server's hella queer, so everyone is welcome. You can find an invite link in the description below this episode.